through um, a quick workout, a quick bodyweight circuit. For, it'll take about 20 minutes maybe. So we'll do the hard work first and then we'll get into some um, shadow boxing style, but I'm going to work it so it's techniques that you can use and try to put into play when you're sparring or when you're in a fight scenario, okay? So it's going to be stuff that'll help you breaking the rhythms of fights and things like that, okay? So all we're gonna work, um, we're gonna work, we're just gonna do a quick five minute warm up in a second, but the actual circuit you're gonna do, you're working 50, 40, 30, 20, and then back up. It's not hard, it's gonna be 50 squats, to every, between every exercise, you're gonna do 10 burpees though, that's the only thing that's a bit shit. So you're gonna do 50 squats, 10 burpees, 40 sit-ups, basically a rest, 10 burpees, 30 lunges, 10 burpees, and then you're working your way back up to your 50 squats, okay? So it's quite intense, but at the same time, it's not something that's gonna absolutely kill you. But then, like I say, then we'll go slow it down and go back to technique, okay? So if everyone just find a space where you are, we'll just do a little warm up, five minutes. So just start jumps. Good, good, good. And it's backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards side. That's it, good. And high knees. Start punching out. And start jumps again. And down 10 press ups. All the way down, all the way up. It's good. When you're done, just back to jogging on the spot, guys. It's good. Okay, just in your stance for me. We're just going to work blocking each side, just losing your hip group a bit. So in your stance, just work on the right hand side, just lift, 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 up inside your elbow nice and high. Just keep that momentum and that rhythm going. And change, left leg. Good, and back to in your stance, just in your stance. From your stance, we're just going to explode with three or four punches. Drop down to a burpee position, so just from there, one, two, hook, drop down, pull up, back to jogging. Any combination you want, one, two, three, four, drop down, back up, back to your stance. That's it. Good guys, keep working like that just for a minute. That's good, that's good. Okay, guys, just jogging on the spot. Get your breathing back again. Same thing in your stance. Just working your push kick. So just left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, left, right. That's it. Keep working that rhythm. Keep that pace going. And knee. Left and right knee. Pulling your hands in, act like you've got a hold of someone, or your knee in a bag, driving your knee through. That's good, keep going, keep going. Good, okay, just back to jogging, nice and steady. Slow it down and control your breathing. And just legs nice and wide, stretching out. Good, take yourself down to one side, take hold of your ankle, try and get your head right down to your knee. <coughs> and change sides. Good, just come back up to the middle and lunge out to one side. Okay, so keep in that position. The leg that's straight, the back leg, just drop it to the floor, drop your knee down, 
and push your hips forward, feel the stretch in your groin. That's good, and come back up, change sides, just lunge to start with. That's good, and again, drop that knee down, and push forwards. Okay, and just come back down, sit on the floor if you can. You, can, you won't be able to see me, but sit down, legs nice and wide. Legs wide and just reach forwards as far as you can. Try to touch the floor in front of you. That's it. Okay, good. Bring your legs back together now. Bend them, just relax. Take over your left arm. Hand behind as you pull across. And the same arm up and down your back now. Change sides, right arm across. And change. Okay, good guys. Um, grab yourselves a drink if you need one, and uh, if, you need, if you want to get a bottle of water or something with you ready, when we start the circuit in a second. And we'll get going with this in one minute. Andy, I've got a question for you while you're doing that. I just yes, seen you doing the leg blocks and you were saying bring the knee inside the elbow. Is it, yep. I often see other people saying, well, bring the knee outside the elbow. Did you, when yeah. you do your blocks, what do you do and why? Um, so if you bring the knee outside the elbow, if I block like that, I've no balance. Basically, it's just stability in your legs. As I'm here and I bring it inside, one, I've got the arm to protect as well. So if it slips off, I've got that defence there, but from outside there's nothing there and you, you end up more off balance because you're coming outside, you've not got that structure in your hips and your, your body position. So if I'm lifting outside and the kick lands, it knocks me off balance. Whereas if I'm here, you're basically in your stance, you're just lifting inside. I'm more compact and stable so I can just crunch, keep my body weight over so I'm a more compact, stable sort of ball. When I fight, it's yep. just because I'm small, I need to be more crouched. For me, I can't do the like Dean James, who's a tall, long fighter, he can lean back. I can't do that because I'll just get pounded on. So I have to stay tight and try and get in close when I block. It's nice and tight so I can keep that position and keep strong. So essentially, as a smaller fighter, you try and make yourself even smaller, make the target smaller. Yeah, just keep come tight, especially yeah. when I block because I want to be able to stay close. I want to take the block rather than have it hit me and knock me off balance. I want to be able to stay where I am so as it hits, I can go straight back rather than going here, maybe losing position and then having to try and fight back to another position. If I stay tight, I can go bang, bang, straight back. So I'm not losing out on the point, Perfect. you see. Okay, guys. Everyone ready? Okay, so we're going to start. It's just working. Every time we do an exercise, we're going to work down by 10 okay but we're going to do 10 burpees in between each thing so air squats normal squats everyone knows how to squat try and get parallel so just hands nice and low we're going to go 50 squats when you've done 50 straight into burpees chest to the floor burpees if you can if it's too hard simplify it and just do the top okay see me there actually do, do, do. sorry guys one sec so if you, if, you, if you need to simplify the burpees, rather than going all the way down, we can just go here to simplify them, okay? So 50 squats, 10 burpees, 40 sit-ups. You can do any variation of a sit-up you want to do. It's just to keep you working, keep you breathing. Back into 10 burpees, 30 lunges, hands on your head, keep your core nice and strong, drop your knee to the mat, come back and just powering up, keeping that core nice and tight as you do it, so you're always working. 10 burpees again, and then we start on 20s. 20 press-ups, 
September, Visa will go impact up. I'll call out, as I'm watching people do it, I'll shout out what's next so everyone knows what the next exercise is, so we're all roughly up to speed. Um, and that's it. When we get to 50, done with that, grab a drink, have two minutes, and then we'll get going with some technique and working stuff you can use when you fight, okay? Everyone ready? Find your space, guys. So, three, two, off you go. 50 squats, so all the way down. Parallel, off you go. Good, nice. When you've done your 50 squats, straight to 10 burpees. Good, guys. Beautiful. Good squats, everyone. That's nice. Good. It's comforting to know, even when you're a world champ, you still got to do the burpees, right, Andy? <laughs> Mate, if I don't do them, I'll get shot. <laughs> I still get shouted at every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's good when you've done your 50 squats. There's no rush. Take your time. Just get a nice rhythm and keep that nice and low. Keep the squat parallel. Back sides down. Straight into your 10 burpees when you've done. Like I say, if the burpees are hurting later on, don't worry about it, start simplifying them. You don't need to go chest to the floor all the time. It's just to keep you breathing, keep you working, keep your heart rate up. Nice, good. When you finish your 10 burpees, for the guys that are there, straight into the 40 sit-ups. Any variation of sit-ups you want to do, you can mix them up. That's it, 40 sit-ups, good. And when you finish your sit-ups, you're back into burpees again. Good guys, that's nice, keep working. Good, good, good. When you finish your sit-ups, 10 burpees and straight into 30 lunges. Just remember on the lunges, grab your head or your hands nice and high and squeeze your stomach as you do it. Really suck your belly button in and tense your abs. Keep a strong core so you're always working that core being nice and strong. Good guys, brilliant work. Keep going, keep pushing yourselves. Good guys, good, 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 keep pushing. When you finish them burpees, after your sit-ups, straight into lunges, remember, 10 burpees, into 30 lunges. Good. Good guys, from these lunges, we go straight to 10 burpees again, and straight to 20 press ups from there, and then you're working your way back up. We're nearly done, you're halfway there now. So how important is this strength and conditioning, Andy, this type of stuff for you guys? If you're always doing pad work and bag work and doing your running, this type of stuff, is it still important? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is one thing I, I kind of missed out on in the last fight because um, I injured my shoulder in Thailand, so I could hit pads, but I couldn't lift up for like three, four weeks. I couldn't lift any weights. I couldn't really do press-ups or anything like that, so... I couldn't really get the conditioning that I need. I made weight easy enough and I was fit and strong, but it's um, the easiest way to describe it, how my strength and conditioning coach tells me is it's like a, you're putting a, a suit of armor on. You're preventing injuries, like when you're doing all this strength work, 
you're obviously building a tight muscle, you're helping with the stuff that we do, it's all fast twitch stuff, so it's what you need for a fighting purpose, building your speed, building your power, but it's building like, a, it tightens you up so you're not, it, it prevents injury yeah. more than anything else, so it helps prevent the injuries and yeah, it's one thing that you, you definitely need. I mean, if you think back to when we first started fighting, there was no such thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You yeah. do your press-ups, do your sit ups but there was no really such thing as in weather, so and even the tides have started doing it now, so it must be must be something when they've started doing it. <laughs> Good guys, when you've done your lunges, twenty press ups, ten burpees, and then you're starting working your way back up. So you're back onto your lunges, burpees, sit ups, burpee and squat to finish. You're almost there. So do you tend to do your strength and conditioning while you're doing your Muay Thai training or do you separate it out? Um, it depends really. Yeah, if, uh, when I'm in fight camp, I'll try to do it at least once a week, depending on what I've got on with PTs and my actual schedule. Um, if I can, I'll try to do it twice a week. Um, so normally, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll be hitting pads with Richard anyway in the morning or with Liam in the morning and then it's usual training in the evenings. Um, Tuesday, I'll try go do strength early in the morning, like seven in the morning, then hit pads at 10. Uh, then chill out Tuesday evening a bit more. I might just go for a run later on. Uh, try to do like a bit of active recovery, go for a long run before, because I, I teach on Tuesday night anyway. So I'll, uh, I'll try and run and then just uh, recover a bit so I can go hard again Wednesday. Um, then like I say, do strength again Thursday. Uh, Thursday morning and then I have Thursday night off anyway because I train Friday, Saturday. So so even if you're doing just the one sport, you're still breaking up your training into different sessions from strength and conditioning to pad work to clinch work, the, the different sessions that you apply, yeah, plan out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we the classes start at like 6.15 at Bad Cobra. Myself, Liam, Joe, Jordan, like if we're all fighting, we all go down at like half four or five o'clock anyway. Uh, maybe do a PT first and then we train at five. Uh, me and Liam will pad work each other and then we'll all, the other guys will pad each other and then we'll all jump in or we'll, we'll box in spa. We, we change it every week sort of thing. So maybe Tuesdays um, we might box spa uh, and that'll be the only training I'll do in the evening. So I might do my strength and conditioning in the morning, box spa in the evening. or clinch. Box spa is boxing only, is it? Just bo yeah, just boxing. Lose a few brain cells getting punched about by Liam <laughs> and Jordan and that. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll change it up. So we'll, we usually change it like week. So I might do Tuesday, we'll do boxing sparring one week. Then the following week, we'll do clinch. We'll clinch for half an hour. But Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we hit pads. And then we we'll go straight into the class. So yeah. we'll do five till six hitting pads and then straight into Richard's class. So we'll do technique and some drills and stuff like that. And then it'll be sparring and clinch. So it's a full-time so, yeah, job. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, that's it. And it's a job, so same thing every day. Repeat, repeat, repeat. There's no way to better way to learn, is there? No, 100%. Okay, guys, you're nearly there. Keep pushing. A lot of people are just on the squats now to finish. That's awesome. Keep going. Good, good, good. Nice technique from everyone as well. Perfect. When you so finish that... Sorry, go on, mate. No, so essentially there's no shortcuts for the guys. You just have to do, put the hours in by the looks of it. Yeah, there's no shortcuts. Yeah, you can't <laughs> avoid the burpees and you can't avoid the squats. You've got to do your strength and conditioning nah, and you've got to do well, the clinch work. That's it. I mean, we don't, we don't do it in the classes in the evening. But I mean, Richard does a, a warm-up. Um, but while Richard's doing his warm-up, we're still hitting pads, you see. So we've been there for an hour already. So we've warmed up, we've hit pads. And by the time we finish, we just go straight into the class. So when we're doing our strength on like a Tuesday or a Thursday, that's our time to do all shit stuff that we don't like doing. <laughs> <laughs> all of the stuff we get out of on Monday, Wednesday, Friday when Richard makes us do it. <laughs> get to do it with someone else instead. Yeah. Good guys, nearly finished. Keep working. This is good. Good technique on your squats as well. Nice. When you finish this last set of squats, guys, have a little stretch out, get some liquids in you while we wait for everyone to finish, and then we'll move on and we'll get this, uh, get some techniques that worked in.
That's awesome, guys. Nearly done, nearly done. Like I say, if you finish while we're waiting for the others, give yourself a little stretch out on your legs, get some blood back into them, get some liquids in you. That's good. Keep pushing, guys. Keep pushing. Almost there. So when's your next fight lined up then, Andy, while we're waiting? Have you got anything planned? Um, no idea, mate. Like I say, we've won. It's just one of those now. Um, yeah. They've started doing events again. They've got their first event on the 5th of June. Yeah. Um, speaking to Chantry the other day and he's announced it. So but none of us will be on that. I don't think it's all going to be the Sat the Asian guys in Bali. Like, I know there's some gyms haven't shut the yeah. guys over there. So they're all all right. But... Uh, speaking to John Wayne Parr the other day, they can't fly out until 2021, so there's no chance of them guys fighting either. Yeah, so. yeah, and yeah, we don't I know guess. what's happening with flights yet. They were, they were saying that they might cancel flights at the moment, so God knows. Just just got to wait and see, really. That's why we're trying to tick over while I can. Are you allowed to have a tick over fight in the UK then while you're waiting, or are you fully, solely contracted yeah. to one? I'm solely contracted to one. But the thing is, as well, like it's, it's expensive because... If you fight outside of the brand, you need to have all your MRI scans and stuff like that again right. when you when you go back. Yeah, so it's, that it's, makes sense. it's a couple of grand, isn't it? By the time you've actually done that and your blood tests and everything, yeah, it's it's money that you've just got to spend. To, I, I can't. You know, I'm 41 years old, and I can't bother with any of that crap. <laughs> Too much just, you, you, you just got a head of steam up, didn't you? You just got your first fight fight under your belt after a few years, and then you're gonna have know, to have this yeah. little layoff again. And uh, I, I fought good as well until I made that yeah, stupid mistake. 100%. 100%. I was winning until I threw my head on his knee. <laughs> you would have thought you would have learned <laughs> after 40 odd years on this planet. <laughs> it's, how, it's how I defended it, though. I defended it. Shit happens. It does. It does. We live and learn. That's all that matters. Yeah. I've, I felt sharp. I think, like I said, just little things where I've not been able to do strength and stuff like that. And, yeah. The, the weighing, doing two weighings kind of threw me. I was on weight. In oh, the hydration but, tests. Yeah, stuff. it's easy, yeah. but I made it too easy. I was on weight in Thailand when I was training. Mm. I lost all my weight in nine days. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I was like, I'm on weight now, like four weeks before. Yeah. So I was eating what I want and I was eating healthy, but I was eating what I want and yeah. just carrying on like that. But then the next thing I knew, I'd done the hydration tests and uh, we've won. As soon as you get out of the ring, they weigh you and do a medical check. And I was only 58, so I'd put like 1.2 kilos on from weighing in. You could have and a haircut. <laughs> and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. But I'm used to, well, you know what I'm like. I, yeah. I used to go from, I used to just, poof. Yeah, I used to balloon overnight and go from 55 to 63, 64, 65 sometimes. And I put no well, weight on. So well, they say when you get older as well, it's harder to cut weight. So I'm, I'm quite surprised by that. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Made it easy. <laughs> Your metabolism is getting silly. faster. Possibly, if I felt, I mean, I felt better for it because obviously you can't really cook water, so yeah, you feel, you do feel better for it because you're fully hydrated. Yeah, so I I like, I've never woke up on the morning of a fight and drank two liters of water and go, ah, <laughs> you feel magic. So it is good. It's a better way to do it, but everyone obviously still cheats. Like people yeah. just fill themselves up, hold your pee in, and then yeah. cut the weight, and that's yeah. hydrating. So. 
Yeah. I need yeah. to I need to master that now. And as soon as but now now we've done it once, I know how to do it. It's a whole it's new like game, new, yeah. It's just another game yeah, you've got to learn the rules to it's and a whole play. New thing. Like, I'm used to just well, but my last two or three anyway, I've I've not I've not cut water anyway, I've made weight easy. But I used to cut like four or five kilos. Yeah. And it and that goes straight back on then. So one of them. Learning curves, <laughs> innit? You know, you're always learning, aren't you? So even at 41, I'm still learning. And that's out, inspirational right? for us all, fella. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Right, is everyone done, do we reckon? Have a look. Good, everyone's done. Awesome. All right, guys. Okay. So, um, what we're going to do, just to start, we're just going to work... To start with, I'm just going to do some shadow boxing, but what we're going to work is a counter to boxing with the elbow. So if you're fighting a sh with me, I've had to fight a lot of strong boxers, and the guard against it is obviously hands up nice and high, but if you want to counter with an elbow, it's not just pulling down and swinging your arms, but you've got to be clever with it, okay? So we're just going to start with, um, what we're going to do basically is going to, it's going to work for fight scenarios. So we're going to start from this, then working into some combinations, adding kicks and other things to break up the rhythm in a fight. Because um, Thai boxing or any martial art, any fight sport, it's basically fighting in patterns. So whether you're sparring or you're in a fight, a competitive fight, it doesn't matter what level, everything's patterns. And the art of it is knowing what your partner's going to do. So you may throw a kick, they may block and kick back. So you know they're going to do that. So it's changing that rhythm and trying to change that pattern. Okay, that's what we're looking for in a fight. Trying to be that one step ahead and trying to be clever uh, and trying to figure out if I do this, they're doing that. So that's how we're going to kind of work this. I think that, that way we're not killing each other, but you can kind of learn a little bit of technique as well while we're here. Okay, so in your stance, guys, and all we're going to do, so hands up nice and high. We're just going to work off the jab first. So obviously, we look opposite to each other because we've been on the camera. But as the jab comes, we'd use our right hand. And all we're going to do, we're going to pull it open. So as the jab comes, we're pulling it out like a windscreen wiper. We cut inside of the glove as it lands and we're pulling it out to the side. Now, as this happens, we're going to pull out and we're going to step our front leg in and out and pop the left elbow up through the middle. So imagine, pretend you've got a partner in front of you. As they throw the jab, we pull down here, step in with the elbow and back to your guard. So you've got to make sure your footwork is in and out. We don't want to land in, land the elbow and then stay there because obviously you can get elbowed yourself. And obviously we've got to do it nice and quick because in a fight, if they throw a one, nine times out of 10, the second one's coming as well. So we can't pull it down and stand there and dawdle, it has to be a quick movement. So just standing there, in your stance with your hands up, imagine the jab's coming and bang, one, in and out, nice and quick. Hands up tight there and just work that. So we pull out to the side, step in with the elbow and back to your stance. Keep working that just on that jab for now. So right arm down and out, left elbow spiking through the middle, in and out, quick. That's it, good. That's it, good. Perfect, guys, keep working. So let me check everyone's. Awesome. Pull it out with the right hand. Spear the left hand up. If you're if you're southpaw, obviously that's opposite for you. Perfect. Good. Good guys. That's beautiful. Keep working. Nice. Good guys, keep working on it. Let's have five more and then we're going to change. So five more from where you are now. Step in and out, back to your guard. Step in, back to your guard. Hands up nice and high all the time. Pushing that elbow through. Good, good, good. Okay, okay. Time. Okay, so the same thing works on the, on the right hand. It's exactly the same technique. But now our left hand will come down and pull out. It's still the same footwork. Our front foot does everything. Front foot steps in and steps out, and we come back to our guard. But this time we pull out, and our right elbow comes up through the middle. So as the jab comes, pushing up through the middle. 
Now, one thing that I need you to be careful of here is as we step in, our hands must be here. Obviously, like I say, if the right hand's come, the left hook's going to come. So we don't want to have this hand down as we're trying to elbow. It's got to be from here. So as we pull the as we pull their jab out, we're stepping up here. Hands up nice and high, tight. So even if the hook does land, it's going to land on the glove around the back of the head. Okay? Try not to be hands down and then coming up because you might leave yourself open, okay? So from there, hands tight. I pull out. I'm stepping up and spiking up straight away. Okay? So from the side there, we step in, bang, elbow through the middle. Arm, elbow through the middle. Arm, elbow through the middle. Pulling the hand out, stepping in. And stepping straight back to your guard, nice and quick. Good, that's nice. Keep working. That's good. Just make sure as you pull the elbow down with your left hand and you elbow yourself, you're not leaving this arm here. Pull, and this one has to come back so it's nice and tight. So your hand pulls and it's back to your guard straight away. So pull here, and as you elbow, you're already bringing that hand back to here. So we'll pull out, elbow up, but your guard is back nice and tight. That's better. Good. Nice, guys. Perfect. Keep working. Good guys, that's nice. Awesome, so five more from where you are for me guys. Just five more. <laughs> okay, good. So, I'll just come forward to the camera for this one. So we're going to work on the lead hand uppercut punch now. So if you're an orthodox fighter, find another orthodox and they're throwing the left uppercut. For that, it's nice and easy to catch. All you're going to do is they throw their uppercut. Your left hand, uh, sorry, your right hand is going to come under your chin and your left hand is going to come out and grab their glove. So you have to use your left hand for control. If you imagine I'm stood here, as I throw my left uppercut, obviously this hand is going to come next. So you're, what you're trying to do is trap both hands. As this one comes, you're, you're grabbing this hand. So your movement is there, bang. You're controlling this hand so it can't be thrown and you're covering your chin here for the uppercut. Now, as the uppercut will land, all this is open. You've got hold of their hand, you're controlling the hand so you can right elbow. So the position is, we're gonna go from here, as the punch comes, trap it, right elbow, back to your guard. So here, left hand, uh, right hand under, left hand out, controlling their glove. You're stepping into it as they throw. One, elbow two. Back to your guard there. One, elbow two. Rotate your hips and really pivot your body across, okay? So from there, everybody let's go. So right hand goes under the chin, left hand goes out, controlling, grabbing their hand. Bang, in the elbow. Step, elbow. Step in, elbow. Control their glove with your left hand as you step. And your right hand comes under your chin. That's it. Make sure the right hand comes under the chin as you control their hand. That's the most important part. If you don't put your right hand under the chin, you're risking that uppercut landing straight on your chin. So we have to make sure it's there. That's it there. That's it good. Better. Nice, Arnas, that's good. Good, Chris. Good, guys, keep working that, keep working that. Perfect, good. Let's have five more.
So there's this adage, Andy, while they're doing it, that I that they used to say that if you have, you have a good kicker, use your boxing. But if you have someone who's very good at a boxing, it's use the elbows. Is that what you would tend to do? If you've got some, you said you tend to find yeah, lots of people with boxes. This is just nice, easy defences. For if you've got a strong boxer and you and you're struggling and you can't kick with them, as you're kicking, you know, I mean, look at Anawat for example. Anawat's a good example of it. Uh, when he was in, in his heyday, he just walked through kickers, wouldn't he? He just walked through yeah. and he was landing big, strong punches. But when he came up against people who are good elbow fighters, that's when he's in danger. Because as you're swinging your punches, that's when you can get caught and that's when it can end the fight. So it's trying to not be put off by the punches, stand your ground and use that counter and timing. Like I say, reading the patterns of your opponent, maybe take the first jab. If they've got a weak jab and they step really far into it, stuff like that, you know they're coming, you can take the first one and then use the second one to your advantage to pull it out of the way and drive the elbows up. Yeah, that makes sense. No problem. Okay, so on the right uppercut, guys, on the opposite hand, if you've got good eye, if you, if you spar regular and you hit pads regular, you'll have good eyes. Because it's coming from so far back, you can see this one coming a bit. So as it comes, we don't need to worry about this right hand underneath anymore. The right hand can stay here. All you're going to do is angles now. So make sure you've got a bit of room at the side of you. You're just going to step out. Imagine your partner's legs are in front of you and their, their back foot, you're stepping towards their back foot as the uppercut comes, and you're pivoting out. As you pivot, you're pulling their arm down so you can land that left elbow. So as you step, the uppercut's coming here, we're stepping out as the uppercut comes and we're beating them to the punch, basically. It doesn't matter about the left hook either now. If they go right hand, left hook, it's not gonna matter because the step takes you out of the way of the hook. As you step and pivot, I'm already out of the way of any hook that can come. So I'm out of danger, so I don't need to worry about this hand. So as that uppercut comes, if you imagine that punch is coming, as it's coming here, I'm stepping out with my left foot on a slight angle. As I step, I'm pivoting out. My left elbow is meeting him as he comes. So imagine he's here in this position, hands down, there's all this gap here. I'm stepping in forwards and pivoting out to the side. So what I want you to do is imagine from here, what's from the back, little step out to the side, pivoting round. Same as if someone's walking towards me, just trying to make them miss. The same footwork and the same movement, all we do is add that elbow to it. As we step out here, pop that left elbow across. Up nice and high, really chopping down. So there, step, boom, elbow down, whipping that heel out, stepping the right foot out as you go, boom, there, pivot through. That's it, good. Get that movement, that's the most important part. Good, nice. Good, Dylan, nice. Yeah, good. Just really let that back foot come with you, Dylan, when you throw it. That's it, that's it. Stan. Just try and step a bit more forwards as you do it. So as you do the step, watch my, there, there and turn. That's it, yeah, a bit more forward, good. Perfect, that's better. Good, Alex, that's nice, perfect. Good, Coco, just pull the back foot out a bit more. So as you've stepped here, let the back foot come round. Yeah, 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 that's it, good. Yeah, good Coco, nice. Good guys, perfect. Good Tyler, good. Good position everyone, that's better. Okay, guys, time. Perfect. Good. All right, so we're going to let combination work and putting it into a style that will suit you in, aspiring, train, even hitting pads, uh, fight, training, hitting pads, whatever scenario. This is all where it comes into play now. So we're just going to throw a simple, basic combination. But the one thing I want to really concentrate on is your footwork. So from here, all we're going to do is just going to throw a jab cross hook followed by the kick. I, want, I don't want you to obviously go all the way around with the kick like you would when you're shadow boxing. 
just control it because I want you to think about your footwork. Imagine it's hit your partner in front of you. You wouldn't go all the way around. It would be boom, and back to position. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just going to throw a jab cross hook and your right round those kicks. So from there, we're going to go one, two, hook, little pause, get the footwork and the step, bang, kick, back to your stance. Just work on that for now, just for two seconds. So just there, jab cross hook, kick, back to position there, controlling it. Jab cross hook, kick, back to your position, back to your footwork, just slight little movement. So every time controlling that back leg coming back to here. One, two, three, kick, back to where it came from and back to your position. Off you go with that just for one second. Good, control the leg all the way back. That's it, good, good, good. In and out, in and out. You'll see why I want the leg back in a second, because it's all about control, positioning, defense, and being able to counter back. Good, nice. Good, Anna, good balance, good. Okay, guys, time there. So we're working exactly the same. So especially in Muay Thai, the most important thing is your balance and your positioning when you strike or after a strike. If I throw a combination and I kick and I fall off balance, the kick doesn't score. So I can land my three punches, I can kick and then I stumble. It doesn't score, okay? So everything's about controlling your balance. When I've landed my kick, I want to be in a position where I can defend and counter. So I don't want to be here, land my kick and then maybe fall off. So if he kicks me back, I'm out of position, I need to control my balance. So there we're gonna use the same combination again, but on the end of it now, I want to use either a block or block and teeth to start with. You can block and kick back as well, but we're just gonna concentrate on something that will work effectively in a fight. So from this position, if you imagine it, we go one, two, hook, we land the kick. He kicks back, we go block, teeth, knock him back. I'm still winning, I've not been hit, I've controlled my position. Or we go one, two, hook, kick, block, kick straight back, back to here. So I'm always staying ahead, I'm defending nice and strong, I'm not falling off balance, okay? Off you go. So one, two, hook, kick, block, push kick. Opposite leg with your push kick. Or one, two, hook, block, kick straight back, okay? So there, one, two, hook, kick, block, push kick with your front leg. One, two, hook, kick, block, kick straight back. Back to position again. Keep that body nice and strong. Yeah, good, good, good. Good, keep going guys, nice. Nice Patrick, good. So on your toes or flat-footed when you're, when you're doing the teeth, Andy? When I push kick, I go flat-footed. If you go up on your toes to push kick, as you land, you're off balance yourself. If you watch a lot of ties, especially like Sanchai, he puts all his weight on it, and it gives you a better, better balance. Like there, teeth there. If I lift up too high, I'm pushing myself off balance as I push kick then. If you imagine you're push kicking the door, for example, if I push kick the door now, my foot's flat, I go up on my toes, it pushes myself backwards because you're off balance. So it's keeping that weight on it. Stab it in and control your balance. Yeah. Good guys, keep working. This is good, this is good. Oh. 
Okay, time guys. Okay. We're gonna work it on the opposite side. We're gonna work it on the left knee now. We're gonna work the same combination, sorry, with right knee and left knee. But again, I want it controlling your footwork. So everything's about where your feet go before and after. So we're just gonna work one, two hook. We'll block the kick and then we're gonna step into the knee. So you've got to control your footwork. As you block, your foot comes back to the floor. As it lands, you push you forwards. That then generates your knee. So we've got jab, cross, hook. Block, land, stepping into the knee, back to position. So you're always going back to your position there. So one, two, hook, block, knee, back to position. One, two, hook, block, knee, back to position. One, two, hook, block. That's it, good. So as you block, your foot lands back on the floor. You're using that land on the floor to step forward into your knees. So you're not wasting any time. Rather than going block and then step your knees too slow. Block, land, boom, straight to the knee, okay? So there, one, two, hook, block, land, boom, knee, back to position. Good, nice, that's it. No, you're not really turning your front leg when you do the hook. That's a Muay Thai style. I do normally, but it's because obviously no one in front of me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You're not loading up. Yeah, if I was hitting someone, I'd throw my body right through, but it's just because yeah. we shadow boxing. Yeah. Good guys, nice. Yeah, obviously when there's someone in front of you, Cliff, obviously you get the impact where you hit them, so you won't lose balance anyway, but if I drop my knee when I shadow boxing, I'll lose position and come all the way around. There's, there's a school of thought though when you turn your front leg too much on the hook that you are exposing your front leg to a kick or, or you leave that, yeah, that's a it. clinch. I mean, exactly. I mean, if you like, when I body shot, body shot is my favorite thing. A lot of people, when the body shot come all the way down here, even tie boxes, I throw it from here. I just push my hip. I don't yeah. use my knee. I use that. So all my power comes from there. And I've had more knockouts with body shot than anything else. It's the timing and accuracy of it. It doesn't matter how hard you hit, it's the same spot. I guess yeah. that's with every shot. But if I really, if I swung for it and kept, I, I didn't look in this position, if I miss, I'm screwed. I'm going to get elbowed or anything there. So I try not to turn it too much. But if I'm sparring and I throw it, it's a quick in and out. It's a quick turn. You bounce back. But yeah, it's just there and back. But like I say, if I overturn it too much, I'm, you're going to leave yourself wide open and exposed to get your leg buried off. It's more just a drill for footwork, this, so you're controlling yeah. your position. Like I say, the most important thing in Thai boxing is your counter. If you block and then you land and then you're waiting all that time before you step to your next shot, you've wasted it and then you're going to get caught again. It's got to be bam and the footwork to get you in that position to land it, that's all. I was always taught at the beginning, it's like a game of tennis, you've got to return the serve as fast exactly. as possible. Exactly. Yeah? If you watch Thai, kick for kick for kick for kick, for me, it's, it's always back, 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 trying to, you're always trying to win the last exchange. So the quicker you can, so if you've got the better footwork, and you can be there and go straight back, that's when it's going to be more effective for you. I was always told my missus would make a good Thai fighter, because she'd always wanted to get the last word in any argument. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that's all of them, man. Don't worry. About <laughs> we're all in the same boat there. Okay, guys, good time. So we're going to work exactly the same thing off the opposite side now. So we're going to work the left knee. The combination is going to change slightly because I want you to work it off of your right punch. This is where you're really going to have to control your hips and control your footwork now. So from here, we're going to go three punches again. We're going to go right, hook, straight. On that last straight punch, I want you to walk forwards as you throw it. So you're already again. You're not wasting time. You're not going punch, then stepping into the knee. It's too long. So one, two, three. We knee back, back. Okay, we're back into position. From there, it's entirely up to you. You can add the block and another knee. You can add the block and the kick. Is, use your imagination for that. Imagine it in a fight scenario. If you've landed the knee, stomach throws back, block, kick straight back. It's up to you, okay? But from there, one, uh, sorry. Cross, up, cross, knee, back, back. So you're back in this position. As soon as you're back here, this is important. As I've stepped and I've kneed, they're going to throw back. From back here, I can block. 
I can catch. I can kick again, I can strike. If I step in on a knee and I fall forwards, I'm in their zone and I'm going to get counted, okay? So a quick footwork there, we've got one, two, three, knee, back, back. One, two, three, knee, back, back. Always staying out slow and strong. Good. Good, Anna, that's perfect. Beautiful step knee, good. Good guys, keep working. Good, Patrick. Just nice and relaxed. Don't rush too much, yeah? That's better, that's better, that's better. Good, good, good. Good, guys. That's good. Keep working. Just one more minute on this. Nice, good knee mate, all good. Okay, good guys, time. All right, next one. Okay, so this is where it's gonna come into play, what I'm talking about upsetting rhythms and changing the rhythm of the fight and trying to do reading the patterns of what people are throwing at you so if you're sparring you're in a fight nine times out of ten if you throw a kick they throw a kick back don't they yes yeah, it's, it's common logic we're fighting straight back straight back so one thing that i made a change with and it makes a big big difference for me is if i throw a kick i know they're going to kick back i use my kick to set them up for a sweep if I throw a right kick, I know they're going to left kick back and then I'll chuck them on their ass. I use it all the time and it works. People try and use that to me. You've got to change that rhythm. So if you throw something and you fire back with a kick and you get thrown on your ass, don't think that's the end of the world. You then have to change your game plan. So for me, if I block and I kick back and they throw me on my backside, I'm going to change what I do next time. So. Work, you can work this in a drill when you go back to the gym with your partners, but rather than going block and kicking straight back, try this, block and punch. You're going to use it like a Superman punch. That way, your partner's expecting the kick to come here, so they're going to go kick and they're ready to catch. If you block, push out. Try not to step forwards. I literally want you to go knee up into your, inside your elbow. It comes out behind you and punch. As you land, you're set up for the kick then. So you go block, punch, kick straight away. What will happen in the fight? They've kicked you, they're expecting the kick back. The put, their hands are going to be here. As the punch comes, it knocks them back, which sets them up for the kick. And it works a treat. I use it all the time, especially if we're fighting on one. In the little gloves, if you fight MMA, it's a good one for the little gloves as well. Block and punch. Because the hands are ready for it. There's a big gap to land on. So from there, we're going to work it in a drill. I just want you to go right kick, block, punch, right kick again. Okay, so from there, kick, block, punch, kick again. Okay, nice and easy. One more time. So we go kick, block, and punch straight away. Left, punch, land your foot, step into the kick. So kick, block, punch, boom, kick again. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. Good camera, and that's it. Good, Anas. That's it. Good. Yeah, good, guys. That's it. Good.
Good guys, keep working. Okay, time, good. Okay, like I said with that one, it's something, if you've got someone who's really annoying, every time you kick them, they kick you back and you can't answer back. Next time they kick, try it. Just give it a go in the gym with that one. You can use it on pads as well. Um, if you watch me and Liam on pad, pad working each other, you'll see us do it quite a bit. Like I say, for guys who fight MMA or have fought in MMA gloves, they're a fucking game changer in themselves. So for me and Liam on one, it's a good thing to have in your arsenal. Even if, rather than blocking and kicking back, hurting your shins, with them little gloves on every punch, it causes damage. Block, punch, and it sets you up to step in with that kick back. Okay, so just, we'll have one more round to finish. I just want you to have a round of everything shadow boxing. Put everything in it. Imagine there's someone in front of you, but try and use the concentrating on your body position for a start not losing balance when you're stepping into your shots and try and use that in it imagine a scenario be inventive with it in your head so you've got someone in front of you you kick them they kick you back use the block and punch set up your next technique okay so we'll go one round full three minute round like that for, to finish but make sure you've got that position you're holding tight okay and try and use things you've done in the class off you go let's go everything shadow boxing Try and set that block into punch up, follow it with a kick, walking through into your knees, controlling your position. Off you go. So what part of your game did you have to change most when you had the little gloves on then, Andy? Is, um, when you say you had to keep a tight guard, it's harder, it's, I guess, when you when yeah, got the ones on. Yeah, it's your boxing defence. I mean, I've, I've fought in them before. Um, I fought in John Wayne Parshaw. Back in the day, 2014 or something, yeah. uh, CMT. So I've, I have fought in them before, but the gloves that Wayne uses are exact carbon copies of uh, UFC gloves. He copied the brand basically, so it's got it has got a big thick padding on them. Have you ever seen the one gloves? They're they're lighter, aren't they? Or the, the, Mate, the there's nothing, nothing on them. They're atrocious. You might as well just fight bare knuckle. Like, look at this. <laughs> So, like with the one FC glove, uh, sorry, with the UFC gloves, they've got a big pad on the front, haven't they? Yeah. These are just flat look. <laughs> Gee whiz. There's no padding on them whatsoever. <laughs> it, it, it makes you wonder whether the, this gives more cuts and how much. Uh, it does. Yeah. Hundred yeah, percent. They're made. They're designed to cut, and like when you've actually got them in your hand, and you can see like where the stitching is and stuff like that. You can angle your punches that yeah, way. Yeah. You can see that they're just designed to rip your face apart. <laughs> if you well, if you look at the Liam and Rod, uh, Liam and Rod, uh, Rod like fight, he um, he only really got caught with three or four punches. Yeah, and he got cut three times and dropped once. <laughs> 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 and it, they're just ridiculous. I think you must have been worried and, though, because you, with your career, you've had your fair share of cuts with scar tissues and stuff like that. That's the well. It's the same thing with uh, with our Liam. It's yeah. the cuts that he got was was scar tissue already. Yeah. No, I don't think any of them were actual fresh cuts. It was just old Opening ones. Up old open. It, for me, it's my left. It's my uh, left hand side. It's my left eye. Clearly, yeah. I don't have my left hand up at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always that side for me. So. We'll, we'll let it that out of the recording. We won't let anyone else know about that no, one. You can leave it. I don't <laughs> care. But no, if you if you fight me, you know what to expect, don't you? Let's be honest. <laughs> So it don't make a difference. I think people have seen me fighting up now. <laughs> it's one of them. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, it's um with them gloves it's it is a game changer, mate. They are crazy. You can the punch you can when winning. you when you hit a punch as well, it must feel different. You I, get I'm, more I'm, feedback. I didn't hurt my hands in the fight. My hands yeah. felt fine and I landed quite yeah. a few shots, but McGowan was with me in the corner and after the fight he went, Fucking hell. You jabbed him and his face went all marked up. Then he jabbed you in your forehead. Before. 
I was like, yeah, mate, that's what they're designed to do. He just yeah. stood there and went, I can't fight him then. <laughs> <laughs> his hand, he, he's, well, his hand's knackered and he's, he's just waiting for the operation. Yeah. And then he's coming to us and he'll be a bad company fighter. And we've got... Well, Has got, he moved up that way now? Has he done? Not just yet, because it was just about he, um, the day before the lockdown happened. He was meant to have his operation, but because of it all, they, can't, they canceled everything. So right. he was going to have his operation. It'd have been perfect because he'd have had the off, and then while well, this is going on, yeah, time to recover. But now he's got to wait for surgeries to open. Oh, so he's, gone pri- he's had to go private with it because it's taking so long. Yeah. Um, but I think he's got a sponsor in between them. They're looking for a house up here. So yeah, oh, he's uh, getting, getting on to that soon. Oh, could that be good for all of you? That's they always say in the iron sharp as iron, you all get together. Yeah, it's great for me. Great for yeah. me. Same way to be. Same way. Yeah, he's in one as well. We, he's, we've been told that he just needs a couple of fights back and then they'll sign him as well. So oh, superb. he'll be in my division. Oh, that's so superb. Be good. It'll be class training with each other. I can't get better than that for me because he's one of the best in the UK, isn't he? So. 100%. And I'm a stupid old man, so I'll, I'll, keep trying, <laughs> I'll keep trying to put him in his place and try to outdo him even. Probably, just got to so. step on their toes. That's what I do when they're not looking. I know, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put my hand on his bad hand. I'll put my head on his hand. <laughs> Make him throw that right hand and just... <laughs> okay, time, guys. When you've done there, good. Well done. Like I say, with the, especially with the block to punch thing, it's something that I'd never done before and we kind of just like invented it in the gym and it worked to treat. It just, it kind of changes your game plan a little bit and it adds a little bit more dimension to your attacking uh, and your counters. If you can time it and you, like I say, change that strategy, you've got to always try and be one step ahead of everyone when you're sparring or competing. So if you can change the rhythm of the fight with one little thing like that, it'll, it'll add something to your game. Even with the, the elbows and stuff like that, you practice them on a partner. Get your lass at home to just throw a punch at you. At least you can show it. You can, <laughs> you can still practice it in lockdown. If you've got a, if you live with a partner, spouse, or a brother, sister, housemate, whatever, get them to throw punches at you. You can, you can use it and try it, drill it, shadow box it. Try and do what you can with it. Hope everyone enjoyed it and that was okay for oh, you. Oh, that was absolutely it. awesome, Andy. Guys, no, if, you wanna, if you've got any questions, you can unmute yourself and uh, fire Andy uh, any, any questions. And Come on, Arnest, I know you're going to volunteer first. <laughs> hey, Andy, thanks for the session. Hey, no worries, mate. Uh, I just wanted to sort of, you, well, I know, I know what's your opinion, but a lot of, I, I struggle to convince a lot of people, especially at the beginning, how important running is. Because they, you know, they go into inter club, they think, oh, it's just 90 second round, it's going to be, you know, a walk in the park. And then, you know, <laughs> and then they just gas out. And I struggle to convince people how important the run is. <laughs> so, um, <yeah. laughs> to be honest, you're talking to the wrong man about that because I've never <laughs> run for my entire fight career. <laughs> um, yeah. So L- Liam, Liam, Jordan, all the guys in the gym, the run, and it is a big, big part of it. But I've been... I'm not like the guys that you're talking about with little night into clubs and things like that. Um, I was lucky enough to make Thai boxing my living and my career. So even when I wasn't out running or whatever, I was in the gym doing 10, 15 rounds of pads. So what, you know, I was always constantly training. So I was training two, three times a day. I was never just doing one session a day. Like you say, you know, going to a full-time job, then coming in, doing a bit of pads and not doing the run. That's a different scenario. But because I was full-time in the gym I'd be in the gym in the morning back in the afternoon then again a third session at night so even though I wasn't running as much as I probably should have especially in the early stages of my career I was still hitting 15 20 rounds of pads a day sometimes and sparring and clinching every day so I was still doing more than most people anyway but now um, even now at like nearly 41 years old now I run more than I ever have before for my fights and it makes a difference makes a difference for your lungs in the later rounds it makes a difference with your weight weight cuts a lot easier i don't even need to cut weight now if i run even if i just try and get like three four five k's a week in my weight is just bang on and i don't need to cut so but yeah it didn't apply to me when i first started but definitely in if for longevity as well um in terms of your fight career you have to be fit um i would say 
not to go too crazy with the runs as I've got older now, uh, same with Liam, he does more sprint work on a treadmill rather than out on the road because it, it can, it knackers your knees up. If you're doing like a lot of people, you see them, especially now because we're on lockdown, I've seen people doing like just randomly deciding to do a marathon and you're like, what the fuck? And if you're trying to compete for a long time, it, you've got to be careful. So you've got to keep an eye on everything. But There's a tight really balance between shin sprints yeah, yeah. and all that sort of stuff but there, there is exactly. a there there is a, a view especially with the thighs that you know when, when they're doing the running it sort of helps with the leg conditioning with the thighs taking leg kicks and yeah do you I've think that or... run. <laughs> yeah look how ties run though they don't run they just walk really quickly yeah yeah they, they don't run and a lot of them cheat like you, you'll have been to the camps is that I, I go running with the ties in the morning at jays and i turn around and be like where are they no i just hid under the subway <laughs> and I go do like a five, six, seven k run, and by the time I come back, they just like stand under a water fountain, splash themselves with water, and walk back to the gym, puffing and panting. So most of them cheat anyway. I've got a question. So back in the day, when I was up, lad, we used to look, <laughs> model ourselves on the Ernesto hoosts and the Dutch star leg kicks with the arching and kicking down on the legs and. You guys have developed this new style of leg kick that seems to be adopted now. Yeah, we kick. How, where was kick where, where was that born from, and, and why is it different? And, and, and um, what is that all about? To be honest, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> we just as soon as we start. I mean, me and Liam used to watch crazy like mental kung fu films all weekend. Like when we were kids, like I'd go around and. It is all weekend, and we just we'd get out like seven films and just watch loads of mad shit all weekend. And we always wanted to like do it, but never really bothered. There was there was no tie boxing then. Um, when we first found it, and I started training, um, I think we just kind of developed it. We had so many different people telling us slightly different things. Then it was Liam that the low kick that Liam does is his own. It's not he he invented that. I don't know if it's from maybe training in Thailand and ties have said do this, do that, and he's kind of come up with his own. Um, but I, I just, I copied that. He basically had to go up and saying, stop doing that. It takes too long. <laughs> but if you watch how he does it, the normal act over kick like you're on about where you bring your leg up high and smash it down. If you time that right, you block it all day long. Whereas Liam, is, he literally stands in front of you and just kicks up on an angle. And you tend not to miss either. You always have that risk when you do the old style K1 where you might catch your foot. Yeah, I think you can only ever deliver those sort of Dutch style kicks is when you tee it up with punches. You used to yeah, see who used to do jab, you've, you've left hook, and like then the kick. Punches in, bring your hands up and yeah. then well it in. But Liam, like, Liam look. and yourself can just bang it without actually yeah, teeing up with the punches, there, right? Nice and quick. So we just we angle it up, we kick up as though it sounds disgusting, but yeah. the way it was described, the way it's described to us, and the way he teaches it, try and put your toe up the ass. Right. That's what you're trying to do. The way you angle your kick, you're trying to put your big toe up the backside. And that way, it's always like the top of your shin as well. That's why Bro, can you break that so down for us, Andy? How, well, how, how would you go about teaching that? Because yeah, so that's magic, that one. You, <laughs> how do you put a top of someone's arm? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, exit certificate there. All right. So, <laughs> it's exactly the same movement as you're on about with the actual low kick. So the same side step, little step out to the side. But rather than coming up and all the way down, we come just up on this angle, so we're here, but then at the very last second, it's just a little turn of your hip. So it's exactly the same as a normal low kick, but we just turn here. So when you think of it, I don't know if you can see that, that's like the edge of my sofa there. So I'm landing there with my shin, so all my foot goes around the back of it, and I'm landing with the top part of my shin there. And it's I think so it's important. You can, especially with the tie game, how you stand and you know, the touch gloves, and you touch him for your, your balance and your body weight. We touch gloves and push. We're trying to like jock into position. Liam does it great. He'll, do, he'll push and he'll push, but then he'll take a step back. As you step back, if I step back, what do you do? You step forwards. As you step forwards, you wait on your front legs, so you can't defend the low kick. So a little step back, and as you step in, there's that quick kick up. <clears throat> so what you're doing is you're coming up here rather than this, you're going here. So it's up on the angle, and then you nip it in at the last second. So it's just up here. And then last second, the little turn. And there's no that, rotation but, on the standing leg at all. It's just bang. Not too much. It's just you bend your knee. It's yeah. Liam bends his knee into it. Yeah. So it's there. And just a little dip and turn in your knee. So you yeah. come up to start and then just dip your leg in and turn at the last second. It just saves a lot of time. Um, 
as you're coming up with that big swinging it over the top, like saying that, especially unless you land good punches, it's hard to land that low kick, especially in the tie game where you're just waiting and waiting and waiting. If you throw that, especially with ties, they'll block it all day long. Yeah, and it's then that timing. It yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's all about it's all about getting the getting the weight on the front leg. So it's either throw it nice and quick, or you've got to time so you're throwing the right hand and the left hook. So that left hook brings the weight onto that leg, so you can land it. Liam's a master at it. You let you literally can't block it. He's fast as fuck as well. <laughs> yeah, it well. is as fast. Uh, it's, it's almost like he out. times it as well, where the foot is. He lets them put their foot in the right position, right? He doesn't ever sort of That's move his saying. left leg and move it. He waits for them to move their left he foot. Goes, into... Yeah, he just all he does is that. He just steps back ever so slightly. It's only like two or three millimeters. He just goes back ever so slightly, and you step forward, and that's it. It makes you pay for it. I can see everyone wanting to practice that when they get back to the gym. Now I can see Arnis <laughs> is that little rice my and Tyler. I see it. <laughs> Guys, you got any other questions? Yeah, this is, Andrew, this is the gold uh, mine. Come on. Hey, yeah. SMC, listen, so moving on from Arnie's question about the sprinting, uh, how is in, how important is the strength and conditioning to your fight camp? Like, obviously, you're not training for a powerlifting comp, but do you squat? Do you do all the full no. deadlifts? Yep. Um, so, if I'm doing a strength and conditioning session, it'll normally do. It'll be. It will be basic weight stuff. We try to avoid. Bench press. Well, I personally try to avoid bench because what you find, and with my physio, it rounds your shoulders. So as you're benching, it actually rounds your shoulders. And that's how I hurt my shoulder in Thailand uh, before my last fight because I've been doing too much bench, basically. And it, it, it arches you forward. Because I stand like this anyway, it would just curl in myself. I have to build my delts and build on my back, which is what I'm doing my pull-ups and shit now. Um, but yeah, we'll do, we'll do sumo dead, normal deadlift, a lot of kettlebell stuff. And a lot of stuff with resistance bands and explosive power. So it's all more about still lifting heavy. We'll still lift relatively heavy, but it'll be a bit of resistance and explosive. So the only time I've done bench recently was in Thailand, but it was more, you know, like where the rack is. It was from the floor with bands, but up to the actual rack. So it's only like that little tiny bit, but explosive and back, but pushing against the rack with people holding it. Um, but yeah, I still do. I still do all the normal lists. Like myself, especially at the minute, because I can't go do S and Z. I'm just doing like the five 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 program. So just a basic squat, sumo squat, and push press because I don't want to do bench. So yeah, I still do the same things, but just it just changes it and adapts it sort of working. Um, it's got to be sport specific, hasn't it? So when you do it, it's got to be something that's specific for your sport. So it's short, sharp, fast bursts. So it improves your punch power, it improves your kick power, improves your core for your balance, things like that. I see you're doing a lot of chin-ups, actually. So is, you, is that going to help you with your clinch, pulling into the body and stuff like that, you think? Or? Yeah, I'm going to rip people's necks off. <laughs> 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 I hope so, anyway. Well, now it's um, basically, like I say, my, um, my physio, I had a shoulder injury just before I went to Thailand. Uh, sorry, while I was out in Thailand in December. And I couldn't hook. So I could uppercut fine, but that rotation, because my shoulders had rounded off, so I'm doing rehab work on that. And basically, because of how uh, her explanation is, how we stand and like arch forward, everything's forwards. So my shoulders are forward, my body's in a slight curve, and I've always been like that. So even when I'm holding pads, I'm like that. So for me, if I'm teaching all day as well, I could do maybe five PTs in the morning, and train, and then do another couple at night, and train for three hours. I'm in that position for like more than half the day, and over 23, nearly 24 years, or whatever, of fighting and training and coaching, it's just fucked my back up. I've got no deltoids and no rhomboids, uh, I've got no rhomboids, so I'm trying to build on my upper back, really, so swinging about on that thing now every day, and just trying to build up some, uh, <laughs> build up my monkey. back. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of strikers come through here with that sort of, uh, a little bit too much benching and they get that slouch and we always balance it out with rowing so like you said if for whatever you're benching you should be rowing that as well at least or double your rowing up with your benching because then you're going to get that balance you know it's something yeah. you get asked all the time like if i'm rounding from bench or whatever or slouching forward on the striking it's how do we balance that out and all the time it comes back to rowing and working it? Back. yeah if you can balance oh, it out so if I, oh, 
Right, everyone can go here now. Me and <laughs> me and Chris are just going yeah. to chat about sorting my shoulders out. <laughs> Have a word with him. Yeah, let him do it. Chris is Chris is our strength and conditioning yeah. coach, and he knows his stuff. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, that's, good, uh, that's the thing. It's like you say, though. It's like building a little piece of armor around your body, and it it's, it's more to prevent injuries than anything else. Exactly. So, so you, if, if I start, if I row, that'll help my shoulders row. Back anything mid back, anything lats, you know, rowing, uh, wide grip pulls, weighted wide that's grip pulls. That's what I'm doing. Wide grip pulls yeah, at the minute. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to vary them anyway just to get used to them because that's good for pulling people's necks off but I want to build yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going like five more each day and just doing as many as I can really any kind of like bent over row anything where you're sort of you're getting that that, that mid back area yeah anything I'm doing bent over row as well yeah bent over row yeah sweet so if I, when I, well when I'm allowed to go back to a gym start rowing as well and that'll help pull it back yeah Definitely, it'll always balance it out. Yeah, 100%. legend. Thank you for that, Chris. Good man. We'll, we'll send you the invoice. Um, right. Call it Quinster today. All right, then, brother. <laughs> I think it's a good deal. Uh, guys, any other questions? Come on, fire away. We've got I them against the ropes. More, I have one more technical question. So I know yeah. you like you like your you like your left uh, switch kick, right, to to counter your opponents. So. Again, I, I was caught once because I have like a lazy return on the switch kick. So sometimes That's what I'm saying. you land. It's all about getting back to position, yeah. Yeah. So what do you usually do? Do you land your left uh, leg back or you land it forward? Like what? What do you? How do you go about? It? So nine times out of ten, I come back to position. But again, it's all scenario based, isn't it? So if I want to attack on the end of it, a lot of time I like left hook to the body. And a good way to set that up is left kick into right punch. As my left kick lands, that brings your hands up and I can plow that left hook to the body in. So it just depends on scenarios. But nine times out of ten, as you switch your kick, land your kick and come back and step back into your stance. That way, you, again, you're in that position where if anything can be thrown at you, you can defend. So if I'm here, I kick back and then just a little tiny step back. It doesn't need to be a lunge and you don't need to rush. There, kick, land and step. So as soon as that left foot lands on the floor, step your right foot back slightly. Because then not only are you back in your stance, but you're taking that little step away so you can adjust and see. So if I've landed my kick, especially if I've landed an effective kick and I've caused a bit of damage and moved them, I've got time to there and there, and I can see what's coming then. If he throws a kick, I can, I can push kick, I can catch, whatever. If I know I've hurt him, if I've kicked and I've come back and I can see I've hurt him, I can go in and throw some more shots. So it just gives you that time. So yeah. As you land, you kick. So kick there, land, just a little step back, mate. And that's the best way to do it. But like I say, if you're going to throw a technique on the end of it, let yourself pop forwards. If you're going to throw something, always go into it because you're keeping that range. If I kick and come back, I won't be able to throw the right punch. If I go here and come back, I'm out of range. So if I'm going to put another shot on the end of it, kick, fall in, bang, bang, let whatever technique you want to go next. So yeah, just it's obviously like I say scenario based, but as a rule, come back to your position, kick, land it where you started, and just a step back. If you're wanting to put another technique on the end of it, fall into it, bang, bang, throw something else. If you if you're using left kick, always follow with right punch. Kick, follow through with right punch or right elbow if you can fight elbows. You can attack the body from it because it leaves like I say, that happens when the punch comes, it leaves all this area. And because I find as I land on my left leg, you can push off of it. So as I land, I really, really drive. I can punch harder from kicking to the body than I can from just doing a body shot on its own. So as I kick and land my foot, boom, I can jump into it. It sounds weird, but you know, you've got to use the weight in your leg. So as you land your kick and you bounce back there, all your body weight's on it, so you can really push and drive through and twist into it. Just mix them up and try them. Kick the bag, kick pads just see what works for you because you can always adjust it and change it end of the day it's what suits you as a fighter but if you've been caught with it then obviously you've got to change something a lot of the guys... with on the counter? say that what was it that you got caught with off the left kick uh it was a cross hook and yeah the the, the hook put me down yeah so for a as you, did you fall into it uh, probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brad, I've no idea. <laughs> yeah. Yes, if you. Yeah, he so did. Stands, what you got to think as well is that you kick, even though you don't think it. Everyone does that. Yeah. You swing your arm, so as you fall in, you're in that position, so you are wide open here. 
Whereas if you go here and you come back, at least you can see what's coming next. But yeah, just try it, just try it. Or when you've kicked, go like <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be tight. Don't I always tell the guys that's praying, like Andy. That's praying. You'd pray before the fight and after <laughs> the fight. Don't do that too much. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? I was going to say, yeah. How do you best structure a corona like Muay Thai? Well, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Dylan. Yeah, so we can hear you. you. Structure like a Muay Thai corona workout. If you only had, for example, an hour a day, would you focus on footwork? Would you focus on combinations? Would you focus on shadow boxing? What do you think is the most optimal way to improve by yourself? Um, so I'm doing quite a lot of online coaching. Um, with people doing one-to-ones, with some of my fighters at the minute and stuff like that. So I'm just tailoring it to, I can see what they need to do as well. So I can actually put them for a workout, which is even better rather than, it's, it's hard when you're working out on your own. That's the worst thing, isn't it? Like you try and work out on your own and you won't push yourself. You'll kind of do it. Like, there's no way on earth if, I, if I'm here on my own, I wouldn't do like 70 burpees, for example. Not a chance. Whereas if you've got someone online with you like this telling you what to do, it's easy to do. Um, it's all mental state. You've got to try and push yourself through it. I think you can work out drills. You can go on any sort of, there's a lot of CrossFit gyms that have got loads of bodyweight workouts and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure Chris will have loads of workouts that are all bodyweight supplied that you can do yourself at home that people will, will happily supply you. There's loads that you can Google. Um, even just making your own up, just really, just, I, I've just been doing some mad shit, just making my own up, but they've been quite good workout stuff I wouldn't normally do myself, you know what I mean? Um, I've been doing crazy ones. Partner workouts, get a, get a mate to ring you and do a workout together on FaceTime. He does one for, you know what I mean? Like I, I've been doing ones with Grace where, and even like with my girlfriend and stuff where we'll do say four or five exercises sizes for 20 minutes i do mine that's my rest while she does hers stuff like that i mean if you can get someone to do it with you on facetime on instagram get a video call going at least you've got someone that'll help you and push you um in terms of your footwork and shadow boxing think about stuff you've done today just shadow box but think about your position where your feet are your movement when you're thrown a knee for example are you putting your feet back to where they should be are you going back to your normal stance can you put anything else on the end of it? Once you've got back to there, put a block on it, put another kick on it, use your push kick. Just You've got to be imaginative. Like part of being a fighter anyway is it, you've got to have some fucks with you, haven't you, to be a fighter, let's be honest. Who enjoys getting punched and elbowed in the head? It's You've got to have something a bit wrong with you, so your imagination should be good. So yeah, just be imaginative. Make a workout up. Think about, I think one thing that I've tried to do is work on things that I'm crap at. So if there's a specific exercise you don't like or you're just not good at, crack on with it. Chuck it into your workouts and try and improve it. If there's something you're not good at in your tie boxing side of things, whether it's your blocks might not be good or your guard, knees, whatever it may be, try and throw it into your workout now when you're doing your shadow boxing and try and improve it now where you've got plenty of time to do it. It's the perfect time to try and sort of perfect those things, I think. No, just thank you for that. Thank you for that. No worries, man. If we've got any more, I'm conscious of Andy's time. We've had him for for 90 minutes. <laughs> uh, we've been uh, blessed. Well, okay, Go on, one, yeah, yeah. We've doubled it now, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> right. Can you hear me? Yeah, Derek. Go ahead. Yeah. So with um, we've got quite a few um, up and coming um, fighters in, in our gym that are wanting to fight, and um, one of our previous fighters had fought, and I thought they'd won it on on um, Muay Thai rules, but when it came to it. They, they had lost, but where I think when it was if it was Muay Thai rules, they would have won. However, the, the opponent had punched a lot more. Do you feel like you need to adjust to which country you're fighting and how the judging scored? Because I feel like the ties they, they, they judge it more on the kicking and you know the the Thai essence of fighting. Whether it's in UK, yeah. I see a lot of punching, and then they still win even though they've not really thrown kicks and knees and stuff like that. Do, do you yeah, think you should so, adjust yourself to, yeah. to the UK <laughs> or? A big part of that is what sanctioning bodies do in the show as well in itself. Um, I had the same problem with Grace on, uh, on Rory's show at the O2, not so long back, she fought for the WBC world title. Um, I thought she won. 
I sent the fight to Tony Myers, who's the guru of Thai boxing in UK, and he gave it to Grace 50-45, like a landslide. She won every yeah. single round. Um, sit Liam, Spencer, you know, even the Thais at Yokao Gym watched it. I was like, oh, no, 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 this is crazy. Mm. But it was WBC and they score it differently. How can WBC, that's a Muay Thai brand, score mm. fights different? Um, like I said, it depends on the judges as well. Uh, yeah. IB, if you follow guidelines of like IBMTO and John Pops guys, you know that it's going to be scored Thai boxing, same as it is in Thailand. Mm -hmm. You know you've got to land your body kicks, you've got to score effectively, effective shots. Whereas if it's another brand, I, don't, it, I can't even, I'm not even going to say, but if it's another one, it could be scored K1 kind of. And what I've seen with it, it's not to like slag off the show, but I've seen on MTGP before because. They've got MTGP and kickboxing Grand Prix. I've mm. seen Thai fights kind of scored like kickboxing and it's yeah. had the same effect. I think it's okay having a mixture of fights on the show, but you have to score them as they are. Uh, but that's just an age old thing in the UK, isn't it, that mate? <laughs> yeah, I think back yeah. in the day, we, I, I, when, I, when I was taking the guys to fights, I'd actually know which sanctioning body is and I'll know, like, all right, guys, we're going to have to be that's heavy the same, punches. Yeah. We're going to be stronger on it because you kind of know certain ones yeah. where the, what the heritage was. Exactly. Were, yeah. yeah. So it, but, it, it is what it is. And I think that's where your coaches come into play as much as anything that's else. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we like, don't what, always you were, get it right. what you were pointing on with um, is it different squad fighting abroad and things like that? 100%. Um, fighting France, you're not going to win unless you knock them out. Simple as that. Um, it's just a fact. It doesn't matter. You can batter them every single round. If you've not knocked them out or dropped them, you're not going to win. That's been like that since I started fighting 24 years ago. Um, in Australia, for example, they score more on the boxing side of things. They are, they are predominantly more punch punches, depending on the show. Um, but 90% of it is more boxing oriented, which is why John Wayne Parr reverted back to being more of a boxer when he came back from Thailand. If you watch him fight in Thailand back in the day to how he fights now, and how his technique is now, is more hands. And it was basically because when he came back, he found it harder to win fights because he was fighting the Thai way. Yeah. And he had to change his game plan. That's why he started boxing and pro boxing a bit to improve his hands. And it just turned out they were pretty sick at punching people and had like 11 knockouts. So, <laughs> But yeah, it's um, definitely scored differently all over the world. I think apart from Thailand, we're probably the closest uh, of the countries. I think, I think we're pretty much all right with it. If you get the right judges, Tony Myers, Richard Wayne, Dean James, Ricky Soul, Panikos, those kind of guys, who are, uh, Darren Phillips, not to like, not mention any, but those kind of guys that know the game and have been in it a long time, they're bang on. They know exactly what they're talking about. Um, and I think most shows are judged quite fair. But again, it's, it's, it's going to be the age old thing no matter how 10 years down the line we're still going to be having this conversation yeah there's yeah. always going to be someone who doesn't agree with it isn't there so but i think out of all the countries in the world apart i think we're the closest in regards to scoring to thailand than anywhere else i mean holland no chance it is just kickboxing even when the fight tight, it's just kickboxing with elbows mm -hmm. france like i said they do know how to score but if you're foreign you're not winning so yeah it's like just you should ask the judges beforehand, like, what do you want, punches or kicks, and I'll do it. I'll, yeah, I'll well, do what I'm doing. Well, see, this is, this is what my argument was with Gracie's fight. We had the rules meeting, and no one said, this is scored, everything scores the same, which is the WBC way. No one said that. So I was like, right. Well, that's not fair. Yeah. That's yeah, not fair. Exactly. well, exactly. We was like, go on, crack on, do what you need to do. Just fight as you normally fight. And hmm. To be fair, even if they'd have said that, I wouldn't have changed as you thought anyway, because... That's my way, it's the Thai way, and that's how I, I coach totally different to how I fight. I fight like a knobhead, I fight like just an absolute idiot, but I, I, I teach totally different and very technical, and I teach things that I should have done 10 years ago, and I wouldn't end up with 200 stitches in the head. But. As a coach, Andy, do, do you modify to the personality of your fighters then? If you've got a fighter yeah, who's naturally yeah, countering, or one is a bit more like you, a bit more aggressive, and want to go in, do, do you modify your coaching in that way, do you? Yeah, I think. I think that's one th as a coach and to be a good coach and have a good stable of fighters, you have to be able to adapt your coaching skills to your fighters. If you've got like 
I know people that can teach people their height and style, but they can't teach tall people, you know, and yeah. vice versa. Whereas obviously I can't tell someone who's six foot three to do things that I do because it just won't work for them. Um, and I think that's one thing I, am, I, I, I do do. I can coach to the, uh, the, the strong points of my fighter, but also work on the weaknesses. If you're tall, I can work on you being a long range fighter and get a game plan for how that should work with your body. If you're a midget like me, then we can work on things that you should be doing to hold your body position and stay stronger when you're getting hit because that's the most important thing, not to lose ground. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think that's the, a, the most important thing about being a coach is being able to look at your fighter and go, right, okay, well, this won't work, but that will. So let's change that. We can slightly change your positioning, change your positioning, your feet a little bit, and you know, sit. But if they're not doing it and it's not working, then you have to try and change it again. You see, so it's it's one of them. I've had fighters come in where I've gone right. Well, we'll do this, and they just can't do it. So then you've got to work around their strengths. Oh well, they're just really fucking fit. Like go mental for five rounds because you can. You know, it's like you've got to work around. So strength. Andy. This, yes, this is this is this just between us, okay? So, so this, 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 this we'll keep it a secret. What is the secret sauce that Richard's got then for the bad company guys? Is, <laughs> is, it, is, is he is he good at customizing his training for you guys, or is it that you all train together and make it? What what, what is the secret? I think it's a mixture of both, mate. To be honest with you, um, obviously Richard's a good coach. He's been training a long time. He goes to Thailand still every year for the six week holidays. And when he comes back from six weeks, his mind goes insane. He's got loads of new ideas. And, you know, he's, what, 30-odd, probably 40 years into the game now. And he's still learning every time he goes to Thailand. And I think that's a big factor, not having so much of an ego that you can't learn. Every, like, I've been doing it 23, 24 years, and I've just got back from Thailand in January at Yokao and learned something new every day. And that's the thing. And obviously... Myself, Liam, Jordan, Badger, Craven now, and other guys, we all bounce off each other. So when when they're doing good, I want to do good. If, if they're winning and I've lost, I want to get back to winning. And we all kind of bounce off each other. So we all train hard with each other. We all push each other. We all try and outdo each other. We're all trying to be the best. We're all, we all want to be the best in the gym. And uh, we all sort of raise each other up. When the gym's on a good vibe, there's nothing better. Yeah. Like if everyone's on the same, everyone just wants, like, when we go back to training after this, the, the, the atmosphere in the gym will be fucking mental because we all want to fight, we all want to train, we'll all be knocking the fuck out of each other. But we'll all be trying, you know, trying to help each other get better and we'll be training so hard. And then obviously we've got Dan McGowan coming when he's got his hands sorted. So Dan's another great addition to the gym. Luke Turner's coming back, apparently. He messaged me not so long ago saying he wants to come back. So... There's going to be me, Liam, Joe, Luke Turner, Dan McGowan. It's House madness. for the savages. Yeah, so th th this is one final one then. So yep. this is interesting because when we talk to people and they say, oh, this is not how the ties do it. Or, but it seems like when Richard goes over, he goes over there for six weeks, comes back with new ideas. It's, it's a sign that our style is always evolving and it isn't yeah, the same. Evolved, yeah. there, there's nothing fixed, right? Yeah, just because the ties say do it this way, doesn't mean you have to do it that way. I mean, like like what we've done today with the whole block and punch thing, it's not really rare you're going to see a tie do that. The block and kick back because it's the tie way to do things. But it's an evolving sport. It's always going to evolve. Like there's always going to be something new added to it, whether it's a new throwing clinch or someone's changed how you do this. And Richard will go away, come back with new ideas that are the tie way, but then he'll go, oh, if I add this to it, that can work. And it look like me and Liam do the same. Like when we go do seminars, we'll be doing something, and then all of a sudden you'll see Liam, and I'll look at him and I'll think, what the fuck is he going to do now? I'm going to break my neck here because he's just thought of something new. And he goes, oh, do this. Let me see if it works. All oh, right. Okay, guys, we're going to do this now. So it just, a lot of it is putting your spin on it as well. Don't Experimenting, just, yeah. Yeah, of course it is. I mean, if you throw a kick and it lands, what else can you add on to it? If I change the way if I change the way I punch, will that have more of an effect for my next shot to land? It's always trying to have something new. Um, and when I coach, I always try and add stuff like, like even the things that we do that we did today with the pulling out for the elbows, 
it doesn't have to be an elbow. If you're fighting K1, it'll work for up or quick to up. It still leaves the same thing. You know what I mean? And it's like, I did a one-to-one with some of my K1 guys the other week, and they wanted to work on it. And I was like, well, that won't work for you, so don't do it. If you pull out here, try that. Oh, yes, it works. Right, okay, okay, now, right, that's a new thing to teach. Remember that, jot that down. And you can then add to it and add to it and add to it. And then as, when you start with something new, you find yourself spiraling off, don't you? And then you're like, oh, well, that'll go on and that'll go on and that'll go on. So just experiment. Hit the bag, hit pads and just try new things all the time. If it don't work, it don't work. No one's dead. It don't matter. If it works, fucking fantastic. 100%. Listen, I'm going to f- sign off with one more thing. Vinny no, Ch- is coming in on Thursday. How big is that for us? What, what is Vinny going to bring to us? It's good for the current state of how things are at the minute. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who are pretty depressed because I've been the same. Just, I'm, I said to you, didn't I, before we came on air, I was, I was talking to uh, Spencer Brown the other day and we sat there and we were just like, it's just become the norm now. Like, it, it shouldn't be, but it has become the norm. I wake up, I do a couple of online one-to-ones, sit down, that's fucking it. He's, and it's depressing, like, everyone's in the same boat, but everyone feels hard done by. We all personally feel hard done by by it. And Vinny is going to come in on Thursday, and he'll probably do your head, and then you'll be laughing your bollocks off at him from start to finish anyway, because he's just absolutely mental. But he'll che- you'll leave the call fucking buzzing you'll be you'll be 100 percent. you'll be in a better mood because you'll just be laughing at him for an hour or however long it goes on for and he talks nonsense so you'll you'll be definitely in a happier mood but the mentality side of things that he'll bring to it will hopefully help everyone get out of this little like dull Superb. sort of shitty thing we're all in at the moment as well well god bless you andy we love thank you all you, thank you guys. i've known you everyone let's just give him a round of applause guys thank you Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. take care mate i'll speak to you soon thank you god bless you see you later guys thank you